So today we are going to continue from where we stopped. On today's class, we are going to build the controller class. Remember that we are trying to use Spring Data JPA to get data from a repository. This way, we are able to uh, have connection to the database, query to the database, and retrieve the data, connect, uh, com uh, uh, convert this, this record to instances in our class, and present this data without actually creating this table or writing this query. So this is done by Spring Data JPA. And in the previous tutorial, we actually created the student class, uh, created the, uh, we created the student class, created the service, and we were able to modify the repository or to wear the repository into the student service, get list of students, add students, um, and so on. So with this we did in the service. Today, we are now going to build the controller class and then we see how it works by testing it. And then, most importantly, we are going to handle errors because there are errors that may occur. I'm going to show you these errors that will always occur and how to handle these errors. So let's get started. And as I normally do, I remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button so that we kind of build up our class and then... Uh, you get notified when I make, make new lessons and also you, and you motivate me to continue making this lesson. So just click on that button to subscribe. If you have some comments, you can just let me know. So let's start building the controller class. So we have student controller class. I think uh, this is an empty controller class. You know, you already know how to create a controller class. Just add a class, annotate this class with REST controller. So as we mentioned, this REST con controller class is the endpoint where a request will uh, be managed. So if a user enters a URL uh, in the browser, that request comes to this controller, right? Good. So from this controller, it goes to the service, to the uh, student service, because we are talking about student uh, object. And then from student service, if data is needed, it goes to get this data from the repository. So see how it flows. And then if you need to review it or uh, look at tutorial 20 in this series. It explains this with a very uh, clear diagram. So let's add this controller class. Now, the first thing we want to do is to auto-wire the service, the student service, into the controller. And that's the first thing we need to do. So to simply create a private member variable of student service. So this ensures that when any object is needed, it is provided automatically. Uh, private student service. So again, uh, you can give it any name you want, but it's better to use this convention. Use the name of the class and also the name of the class, but this time it starts with a lowercase. And you now add the auto wire annotation, auto wired, auto wired annotation. So that ensures that this is uh, auto wired. So just press Control Shift and O to add the, the import statement. All right. So I'm going to actually. Uh, write out this uh, one by one and after I'm going to copy the remaining one. So let me just type out a few so that you exactly see how it works. So the first thing we want is a list of students. So public. So in this case, uh, we are getting all students. Let's see. Okay. Public list uh, students. So this method will return list of students to, to, the, to the user. Public list students get all students. Okay, so now you simply say um, you simply say student service. Let me make some room here. Students service dot get all students. So it's basically this simple. And now, okay, click here. Press Control Shift O. And then we have to import from java.util at least. Uh, why do we have this error? Okay, so we're actually going to return it. All right, so uh, again, you add the URL pattern. So the request mapping. So one, when a user goes to the URL slash uh, students, and then it gets the list of students. So request mapping is going to be, the value is going to be, uh, is going to be slash students. 
So it's this easy. Now we could have specified the method. For instance, uh, method is equal to method is equal to get. But if you don't specify it, it could still be the default. The default is get. So request mapping. Request dot is that request mapping dot get. I think that is it. So okay. So I put a comma here. Good. So. Okay, so now instead of wasting time, but it's better I show you how to manage to handle this error. So how to request mapping, set method type to voice. So this is so you actually at request mapping. So this good, fine. So you can just import it, and that is fine. So as I was saying, you can leave the get the the HTTP method to blank, or you can set it as well. The, if you leave it blank, the, the default is get, so it can still work. But in case you want to use it, you can uh, use method is equal to request dot get. So it's, it's as simple as this, right? So I think it should be lowercase. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, so method, yeah, lowercase. So, so, just change it to method. All right. So I'm going to copy the remaining one. So I'm going to copy them one by one. So I'll be able to make a little explanation. So let's go for getting a single student. So this one will be get by ID. So now you have get by ID. So in this case, we have optional. So this is optional. I'm going to import it as well. So it it ensures that if there are no students there, uh, if there is a no value, then we don't have an error. That is why we have this optional. Then again, we have the next nice one is to post add a new student record. So I'm going to copy it and, and paste it as well. So for you, I would like to recommend you you type it out by yourself so that in this case you becomes very clear to you. So in this case, I'm going to copy the remaining two. Okay, let's just take it one by one as we've been doing. So in this case, it is um we are updating students. Update. So it's fairly the same with the method for add. So so this one will be delete. So let me copy it and paste. All right, so basically we have created the controller class. So let's just look into the service again to see what's happening. So we have the student service. So basically the repository is doing everything. We are not, we are not writing a code. So we have the save, the find by ID, the save. We also have the delete by ID and so on. So the controller is actually talking to the service. Okay, so we are going to test this, and the main thing I want to show you is how to handle errors. I'm going to test this application now by running it. So I'm going to, everything is saved, so I'm going to right click on this place, on the app, and say run as, and I say uh, Spring Boot App. So I'm going to run it as Spring Boot App. At this point, I'm going to maximize this, and I'm going to make more room for the console. An error will actually show up in this place, and I'm going to explain to you why this error is there. All right, so now everything ends. So if you see anything like this, then know that error have occurred in the application. So you can see that this error is caused by. So always look at caused by. So it says caused by Apache Debbie uh, standard error schema is in does not exist. So what it means is that the problem is coming from the in-memory database. So we, we need a way to tell uh, JPA that if the database does not exist, create a new one. Because in this case, we are, we are managing the tables. We are trying to create a table. But first, the database has to exist. But in this case, we don't have a database. So if the database does not exist, create a new database. That is what we are going to tell uh, JPA. And to do that, to communicate that to JPA, we have to use 
a single line of codes. So on the handling errors, we have modified a properties file. So this single line of code here that you use to tell JPA to create a database, if a database is not there, but if it's there, update it. You copy this line of code and place it in your application.properties file. Where is the application.properties file? It is an SRC main resources application properties. So go ahead to paste it there and save your application. I would like to play this console and I'm going to run it again and let's see what happens. So run as Spring Boot application. So at this time, if we are fortunate, we don't have any error. Uh, that error is gone. So you can see uh, most likely the Apache Tomcat server is going to start successfully and we are good to go. So at this point, you can see Tomcat started. So let me shift this. Okay. So you can see Tomcats have started. So if I go to a slash students, Uh, localhost, let me just uh, type it. So at this point, I don't expect to see any record is going to return empty because the database, uh, the table is empty as well. So it means that we are going to now try to use advanced REST client to try to insert a record into the database. So as we are inserting a record, creating a table, inserting a record, and saving this record at the same time. All right, so I'm going to make a post request to the slash students. And in the body, I'm going to specify uh, ID, name, and department, because those are the fields in this in this class. So I would like to use another name. All right, so department is computer science, and I'm going to send. Okay, so this is the next error I'm going to explain to you. So here it says no default constructor for entity com does kind of the genus the social the students and so on. So that means that in our student class we don't have a default constructor. Remember, a default constructor is a constructor that has no parameters. So let's open our student class and add a default constructor in there. Let me stop this application first. So I've stopped it. I would like to play my console and I'm going to open the open the student's class and I'm going to add a default constructor. So add a default constructor simply it is just the same as uh, the other constructor, which is this one, but this time no single parameter. So simply say public student. Uh, no parameter and open and close. That's all. So this is the default constructor. Uh, uh, JPA needs it to be able to create new records and new instances if the record comes in. So I'm going to save and I'm going to run this application again. So let's run a Spring Boot app. And at this point, we were trying to insert a record into the database table when we had this error. We are going to try to repeat the same process again. So let me go back to, let me just make sure that it's running. Okay, Apache started, as you can see. Let me just check this. So everything started to this point, no error. So REST web client, I've opened it. I'm making the same post request to this URL and I'm going to send. Okay, fine. So you can see 200, okay. Now, I can make a GET request and see if it's in something, but at this point, I'm going to make the GET request in my browser. So at this point, I'm going to make the GET request and you can see it's in something successfully. Now, let's try to make an update request and then I'm going to end this class after now and then you can try all this by yourself. I'm going to make a PUT request. So I'm going to change, I'm going to make a PUT request to slash student slash S1 and I want to change the the, the department from computer science to software, software development. Okay, so I'm going to send this request and you can see it's 200, okay. 
So if we go back to the browser and refresh it, you can see that it changes the software development. So the update is working. So I want you to insert a few more records and make a uh, delete request, make a get by ID and just play around to make sure you get your head around it. So this is how we come to the end of this lesson and let's just look at what we are going to learn next. So in the next class is going to be, we now create JPA repositories for the social API application. We will create repository for, for posts, for posts, for, uh, for users and also for location. So I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe. Also uh, activate the notification button beside the subscribe button. Like the video and also leave me a comment if there is something informative for you. I will see you in the next lesson.